Hey everybody, it's Dr. Kalanicki. Sorry I can't be there today, but you get a really cool lesson on dependent events. So yesterday we talked about picking more than one thing at the same time. Today we're still going to be talking about more than one thing, um, but it's going to be a little bit different because dependent events, these are events, are dependent events, if the occurrence of one event does affect the likelihood that the other event will occur. Hmm, what does that mean? So let's scroll up a little bit. Here we go. Got our key idea. Probability of dependent events. The probability of two dependent events, A and B, is the probability of A times the probability of B, but after A occurs. So again, we're talking about depends. So what's going to happen is one event is going to depend on the other. So let's look at an example to really get a good idea of what's happening here. So there are six black socks and four white socks in a drawer. And if there wasn't a picture here, I would probably draw one. If one sock is taken out without looking and then a second is taken out, what is the probability that they will both be black? So now the real situation here is that the sock is not replaced. That's really what the problem should say, is I don't put the sock back in the drawer. I take it out and I leave it out. I don't put it back in. So let's look at what is the probability the first sock is black. So I'm going to reach into this drawer without looking and I'm going to pick, I'm going to try to pick a black sock. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six black socks out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten in total. So the chance that the first sock is black is six out of ten. But here's what happens. I want you to take your finger and I want you to cover up one black sock. So now that sock is gone. Now I want to pick a second black sock. Looking over here, now there are only one, two, three, four, five black socks. So I took one out. See, I took it and I left it out. I'm hiding it. So now there's only five black socks, but there's also only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine socks left. So do you see how the second probability really depends on what I picked the first time? So now there are not 10 socks, now there are nine socks. Now there are not six black socks, now there's only five black socks. So the probability of both of those things happening is I take the first fraction and I multiply it by the second fraction. Let me get my calculator out. Hopefully you have one. Oh, there's my, it's over here. All right, so I'm gonna do six ABC 10 times 5 ABC 9. Final answer is 1 third. I would say that's pretty unlikely to happen for me to get two black socks. So again, the situation here, just notice that the second fraction is going to change based on that first pick. So let's try it now. Every time I get a new problem, the the picture resets itself, meaning I'm not covering up that black sock anymore. Now it's a brand new problem. So brand new problem, reset the socks. So now this says the probability, again, just because it says P black white, it's really saying the probability of picking a black sock and then a white sock. All of that just from P black white. Probability of picking a black sock and then picking a white sock. So again, reset my problem. Start again. Black socks. There are six black socks out of ten socks altogether. But again, after I pick that first black one, I cover it up. And now I want a white sock. So I have one, two, three, four white socks. And now it's only out of nine socks altogether. And again, 
get my calculator out to do the math for me. 6ABC10 times 4ABC9. You get 4 out of 15. Again, not very likely to happen. And the last one, so again, picture resets. We do again. I'm going to write the situation resets after each problem. And now, pause the video if you need to copy anything down. I'm going to try not to talk too loudly because I know the microphone's like right by my mouth. So if I talk too loud, um, you guys tend to get like blasted out. So I'm going to try not to talk too loud this time. All right. So now probability of white. Looking at my picture, write down the fraction of me picking the first white sock. Pause the video if you need to. I want to give everybody some think time. Okay, if you unpause it, that means you're ready for me to go over it. So, probability of a white sock, there are one, two, three, four white socks out of ten total socks. But now I just picked a white sock, so let's just cover up this guy right here. Now I also want to pick a white sock. This time my fraction will not be four out of ten. This time it will be three socks, which are white, out of only nine socks left. Again, pause the video if you need to. I want the answer to this problem, making sure everybody's using their calculator correctly. Okay, if we're back. Let's get this final answer now. Four out of 10 times three out of nine is two out of 15, man. There's really no good chance of me getting a good pair um, of socks. I'm gonna get. I'm just gonna have a black and a white one, maybe. I don't know. It's not looking so good. All right, let's flip it over. So again, like I said in the front, if there wasn't a picture there, I'm gonna draw one. And since there's not one here, I'm gonna use this space over here to draw one. So. Three red marbles. You know I use the letters to show visuals. One blue and two yellow marbles in the bag. And again, something that's really good to do now that I'm done. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just count them up. And now I'm ready to get started on the problems. It says once a marble is selected, it is not replaced. That's really the key to a dependent problem. If I don't put the marble back in, then the situation is different. So what I pick the second time is really going to depend on what I picked the first time. So let's start with, again, just because it says P red and then yellow, remember the situation. What is the probability that I pick a red marble and then I pick a yellow marble? So let's start with the red one. First fraction, picking a red marble. 3 out of 6. Probability of picking a yellow marble. 2, except this time I already picked a red one, remember. So it's 2 out of, not 6, but 5. I should have let you do that one first, but that's okay. This is the final one I'm letting you do. I set it up for you in everything. Set up the picture. I showed you the first example. This answer is one-fifth. Okay, so right now with a partner, I want you to try, mm, let's try two, three, and four. And then I'm gonna do five and six with you. So pause the video. You can do them with a partner. You're gonna do two, three, and four with a partner. Okay, if you're back, that means we're ready to go over these. So first one, probability of red and then blue. Starting with the red, I have three red out of six total. But then I take one of those reds away, and now there's one blue, but only out of five marbles altogether. I should get the work before. And that final answer is one-tenth. 
two red marbles in a row. So the first time I pick a red one, there's all three out of all six. But now, when I cover up a red marble, now there's only two red marbles out of five. And that answer will be one-fifth. First time I pick a blue, there's only one blue out of six. And then when I pick a yellow, there's still two yellows, but only out of five. Final answer, one-fifteenth. Same thing with the yellows. I, I think these should be okay. Um, the first time I pick a yellow, the second time I pick a yellow, there's only one left out of five. Again, one-fifteenth. And this final last one, three red marbles in a row. So the first time I pick the red marble, three out of six. Then I cover up a red one. Now it's only two out of five. But now I want a third marble. So now I have two marbles. And now there's only one red marble left out of one, two, three, four. So it's good to have both hands working. Man, final answer. 1 out of 20 for me to get all three red marbles in a row. Okay, I want you to try these guys on your own. Remember, my advice would be to use some of this space to start with a picture. And once you have tried them, you can either have the sub or Miss D come around and check you, um, or you can wait and the whole class can watch this video together. If you're good, though, there's another uh, worksheet that you guys can work on. So pause the video. Do these by yourself. Okay, if you're back, you're ready for me to do them. One purple, two green, five white for a total of 12. So first one, the blue. There's four blue out of 12. But then when I take one of those blues, because again, that clue word, not replaced. If I take the blue one, now there's only um, 11 marbles, and two of them are green for a grand total of 233. White. First time I pick a white, there's 5 out of 12. Second time I pick a white, there's only 4 white marbles now, and only out of 11 in total. Probability of blue, again, reset my problem. There's four blues out of 12, but then I cover one up, and now there are only 11 marbles left, and one of them is purple. And then finally, purple and then purple. So there's one purple out of 12, but then after I pick that one, what happens? No more purples. So, zero out of 11. So when I do this, what happens is my probability is zero. What does that mean? Can I pick a purple and then another purple? Not unless I put them back. So remember, a uh, probability of zero means that's impossible. Could never actually happen. All right, guys. So that's what the lesson is going to be for today. But there is another worksheet for you guys to work on for dependent events. Um, see if you can get as much of that done as you can, and I will see you guys back at school tomorrow. Hope you have a great day. Bye.